What's going on everyone? Soxway Up's back with another edition of Sock Town. Before we get started, I do want to thank the community out there for getting us to 50 subs. It's been amazing. I set a personal goal to hit that by the end of the year, and it's not even the end of September and we're already there. I've seen a lot of new traffic coming into the channel since we started making these City Skylines videos, and I am loving the support. I want to thank you guys a ton for that, and I'm a little... I'm a little overwhelmed, to be honest with you. Did not think we would see this type of growth on our tiny little channel, but it's exciting. But we're going to start off this episode kind of showing some updates that I did, you know, off camera, like we've been doing in the last few episodes. We're growing, trying to get to that 7,000 mark so we can get the high density going. Um, but it's coming together. I'm really liking the way the city's turning out. Uh, today we're going to focus on a recreational area, and also we're going to start getting some of our mass transit going, specifically buses. Um, it's going to be needed as we get larger. We're, again, we're almost at 7,000 population, so traffic's going to pick up here pretty quick, and getting some public transportation out there is going to help. Also added a little more detail to the farm area. Um, after I record this, I'm probably going to go and extend that. You can see some paths I added. I, I really like it. One other thing I wanted to mention, we've added dynamic resolution, relight, and shadow strength adjuster to our mods. I need to add that to the mod list still. Um, but the city looks a little different because of that, and the resolution's a lot better. I hope it comes through on the recording as well. So, to get today's episode really going, we're going to start by adding some parking lot roads again. You're going to see a lot of this in my cities. This area we're calling our recreational area. It's going to include a high school, elementary school, some parks, um, and more things just for the kids to do when they're not at school to have a safe place for them to stay. So if we're getting the parking lot going. I try to go with a unique design that's not just, you know, straightforward and, and basic. Give it a little bit of character to this area that makes it stand out as its own. I think it's kind of neat. But again, these parking lot roads I'm, I'm in love with. It, it's a realistic feature. It gives uh, the kids or the teachers, in this case, uh, places to park while they're at work. Um, and also the older kids in the high school, some places to park. Probably could use a little more parking for that situation, but this gets the idea across and surrounding it with parking I've seen this in real life before you drive around to the back side and you got entrances from both sides of the neighborhoods um, to get easy access to the school we went with the community school and the art institute I think it's called and we thought we wanted the public library there it didn't go in I like the look of these a lot better you can see we had the community pool and the gymnasium and then we switch them around so the thought process there is that this high school has sports teams um, and we're going to give them facilities for those to, to be played at. So some tennis courts on the side there and on the other side we're going to put some outdoor basketball courts. And uh, the, yeah, again the idea is that they have, they have sports facilities for the high school for the kids to play their own sports. So they got a gymnasium for maybe basketball and volleyball. And then, you know, you got the swimming pool for, you know, your, your swim team and also for kids to just come and get, get away and have some places to hang out. We were looking for a unique building to add in the area. It's not going to work here. At this point, we um, needed to add some sewage lines. So we took care of that in the middle of our time lapse. And then we get back to some detailing. So the last episode was details. We showed my style of detailing. And... Not sure if I said this on the video or if it was just in a social media um, mes message that I posted out there, but I feel like it's my weak spot. And so I've decided to challenge myself a little bit and add more detail to my builds and, you know, get them looking more um, fancy, I guess. So at this point, I was just adding in some, some little props here and there to fill in the area instead of just relying on trees for a majority of it, which is what I'm trying to improve on. And it was going pretty good. I did not realize that my path that I laid down broke the parking lot uh, spaces. So in a little bit, I do fix that. But I'm adding some bushes and some trees to fill it in. Again, we're thinking about, you know, the kids after school hanging out here and giving them a safe place to hang out with their friends and stay out of trouble. Keep them off the streets, even though they're on the streets when they're here. I think that's just a saying, though. Now that I think of it, it doesn't make any sense. Not at all. But yeah, so we keep going here with some, some more details of some props and 
you can see we fixed that path. We, we removed it. I wanted to have a path there, but that just didn't work out for us. Um, some more park benches and some trash cans. We want to keep it clean. And I start playing around with fences here. Probably going to revisit this area offline a little bit and um, finish it up. But I wanted to kind of see what it, what it looked like to kind of close that area off. And I think it worked out good. I didn't go and do the other side, but uh, we'll do that later as well. Um, and then get to the point where I just needed some filler, got some color in there. So it's not just trees. There's some parks or benches and everything. Land value is going to go crazy in this area. So that's that was one of the main motivations for that. It was add some more education for the kids and get the land value up so those houses continue to upgrade. So we do our little tree treatment and we call that section pretty much done for now. And that's going to allow us to have plenty of plenty of room for schooling for the kids. This next section, we're starting our mass transit. We're going to start with buses first. Eventually, we'll add all kinds of different transit in here. But I wanted to have just a isolated area where the buses come out. So we went with the original bus depot at first, but then we switched to the biofuel one. We are going to transition the city into a full green city. No pollution or as little pollution as possible. So this is one of the first steps with that. But then this little loop that we created, I didn't want it to just be a loop that was by itself. Again, I'm challenging myself with the detailing. So I kind of envision this in my head as just a little plaza for people to hang out with or hang out and, and get away from their house when they want to. Maybe maybe we have Wi-Fi in this area and people are able to work from here and just walk you know, a short walk from their house and get them going on some some cool scenery to, to hang out outside. And again, we got in some props, and this one was a little unique idea. I decided to mix two props together to make a unique statue. Let me know what you think about that. I think it's pretty cool. I might do that a lot more moving forward. But again, we're just we're just trying to push our limits, um, push our comfort zones in City Skylines, and add a lot more detail. This next detail I add here, which some you know barrier gates to, to the little um, food cart here. I was a little disappointed I couldn't zoom in any farther because I kind of wanted to see what it looks like. My idea here was that you're like controlling where the line is when they're lining up to get their food. I mean, how much, how more realistic can you get than that? But again, we're adding a lot of trash cans again. We're going to transition into a green city and I really want to want to focus on making this a clean, pretty town. And as you can see, I'm breaking my habit of using a single type of tree as well to give this area a unique feel. Again, it's just a bus depot, but it's also it's a pretty bus depot. At this point, we start adding in our bus stops. When I first started playing this game, I would just make the most random bus routes for these. And I've learned that when you're trying to remove traffic by adding buses, sometimes you can make the traffic worse. One of the main things I try to do with these bus routes is keep them away from the intersections. So they're, they're ex you know, that one's ah, way too close. Um, by keeping them a little bit away from the intersections, you can help the traffic a little bit. You'll notice if you put them right by a corner, it's going to get buses backed up and then people are going to be backed up behind it and nobody wants to deal with that. Not at all. And here we switch to the CSL uh, map view mod to kind of get a look at where our routes are going right now and where they're lacking. I revisit this later to see if I remember to cover everywhere. You can see it in game, but I really like that view to help me out. Um, as we get to where we're gonna add the um, railroads and the um, subways, we will go back to that again and kind of make a game plan on where we want our subways to go. And it, you know, it gives you a good idea of where you're missing uh, transit and all of that to really minimize the amount of cars that are on the road and we hit big town so that was a big goal that i wanted to hit in this episode and it helped out a lot and um because of that we'll be able to move to high density next episode i'm really looking forward to that this small town has a lot of low density houses because of realistic population you can kind of see how long it took us to actually grow to that 7,000 number to get those unlocked but now our population is going to skyrocket, but we're going to be very conservative on where we put our high density because of how many people fit in that. That's an easy way to break your city and really destroy the traffic. So the goal there is going to be get some of this mass transit in place, get some of the subways in place, 
as we add high density to make sure we don't lose this city and get it out of control. Again, we take a peek and we realize there's a couple areas we missed, specifically the farm town. So we go back over there. We had one of our last bus routes of the episode. And it's kind of funny, I, I overlooked the fact that these were uh, dirt roads and yeah, kind of funny. But yeah, so that's pretty much wraps it up. You know, we get a little recreational center going. We got, oh, that's, that's too many buses. So another pro tip. You're going to notice that you have a lot of buses. The game tries to figure out by the length of the route how many buses it wants to add. But if they're not full, you don't need them all. And honestly, you don't need them all anyways. People will wait for the buses. So I go through each one of these lines and I, I knock down the buses pretty much in half for all of them just to limit the amount of traffic. Because again, adding mass transit can backfire, especially with buses. You'll get a lot more cars on the road and a lot more congestion because of that. So the other last thing I do is I give a color to each line to keep them unique. And it does actually change the bus color, which is pretty cool in this game. But again, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, again, I want to thank you for joining. Thank you for the support. And I'm excited to see where this city goes. And I'll catch you on the next episode of Socktown.